Good evening everyone. Today we are going to do the daily lead code challenge of 3 February 2023. That is question number 6, zigzag conversion. The question is very straightforward and not much of data is given. The question is saying, we are given a string, PayPal is hiring. And it is written in a zigzag pattern and they will give you the number of rows. After you have arranged them in the zigzag pattern, you have to read it by line. That is in this order. And you have to return this final answer. And our code will take a string and we will also give the number of rows. We have to return the output. So without further delay, let's move on to the examples. So in the first example, what they want us to do, we have to write PayPal in three rows. P-A-Y, P-A-L is hiring. This, this is a zigzag pattern that you have to follow. They want you to follow this with a number of rows, three, zero. 1 and 2. Total rows 3. You have to do this. And when you have done this, you have to return it line by line. You have to read first 0 line first. That is P A H N, then A P L S I G, then lastly Y I R. That's what you have to return. Let's see second example. It is also same that it is divided in 4 rows and we are returning line by line. P I N A L S I G. Y H R P I. That's what you have to return, and it is in four rows: zero, one, two, and three. Total rows four. And the third example, final is when you are given a single element. When you are given a single element, you will simply return it. So it is our base case, you can say corner case. So how can we do it? Can you think of any approach? We can simply make a vector of vector, and we can store it, and we can print it. But that would utilize some space. But when it is asked in interviews, they will say you have to do it constant space. So you cannot create a vector in that case. Yes or no? So how can you do it? Please try to think around it and then come back to the video. So I hope you tried something. So now let's see how to actually approach it. Let's take this example when we are given four rows. So we will divide this thing into sections like this. One section, two section. And here can be the third section. So what does dividing by section mean? We need to know how many elements are in there in this section. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are 6 elements in one section. Let's see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 elements here as well. So how to get that this number? So see this thing that we are going from, we are going one time this way that are 4 rows. And again we are going 4 rows upward. Yes or no? So there are 2 iterations you can say. So how do we actually get it? So what we actually do, we multiply 2 into number of rows minus 1. Why number of rows minus 1? 2 is because we are going downward and then again going upward. And why minus 1? Because we don't need to include these numbers. Yes or no? We are considering sections. So elements in a section are 2 into, in this case is 4 minus 1. That is 2 into 3, that is 6. So here are 6 elements in a section. We need to know this. So for the first element, if we add six steps, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, we reach to i, and that is our six element in the string. Yes or no? And from here again, when you move six steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, you are reaching here. So whenever we are have to move to another, add the same element after six steps, we can do it. But problem arises when you have to do it for the middle rows, that is one and two. For third row, it is also same that you will add six steps and you will reach to the ending moment. But what to do for middle cases? So for the middle cases, uh, see here, what we actually have to do for the middle cases for the upper elements or the last element that is zero and n minus one row, we can simply add the current uh, number of elements in the section. Number of elements in the section and it was six. That is two into number of rows minus 1 that formula but how do we do it for this because we have to add this l before this s so for that we notice if we remove the upper two elements we can get the number of elements in between so for that we come to a formula that is current section minus 2 into number of rows so what this means is here total elements in a section was 6 and number of row for a is 0, 1, 2, 3. That is 1. So if you multiply 1, that is 4. 
that is one two three and the fourth element is l which is required so how do we arise to this formula two is because we are going downward and then upward in zigzag pattern but why are we subtracting it from six because we are not including the upper limit elements that is the starting upper element p we are ignoring it and we are trying to create a formula for the middle rows that's why we are subtracting it from the current section elements so 6 minus 2 is 4 so there are four elements let's check this for second row for second row if we apply this formula that is 6 minus 2 into 2 that is 2 6 minus 4 is 2 so let's see why 1 2 second element is a so we are reaching it so how do we actually code it so the overall approach is this that you have to this formula to get the element in section and you have to this formula to get the elements in between when they are not the zeroth or last element. So this is the overall approach. So try thinking how you can code it. It will be without using any extra space. That is what I told you. So let's try to code this. Let me just zoom it for you. So coding this is pretty simple. What you have to do as I told you if number of rows is equal to 1 that is the rows are 1 that means there is only one element we return the string as in this cases when number of rows is 1 we return the string itself after that if this is not the case we need to create an answer string inside that string we will store the answer also we need to create the total number of elements in the string that is int n is equal to s dot size that how many elements are present in the string after that you need to get the elements in the section character in section how many elements are in the current section as i told you it will be 2 into number of rows minus 1 that are the number of elements in the section after that i told you to start a loop for int as we are in current row will be equal to the 0 then current row should be less than what number of rows that how many rows we have to create and we will increment our current row each time after that we need to initialize index to current row you can also take the variable as i there is no issue in that i am just writing current row for better understanding after this what you can do you will create a while loop while index is less than n what does this mean that means uh, when you was here when you have reached here you need not to further check for the next middle element or next last element because you have reached the total number of elements so this case is very important that's why while index is less than and that it is not exceeding the bounds we will add it to our answer answer is equal to string index after that you need to check for the other two conditions what was that if current row is not equal to zero that is it is not the first element and current row is not equal to number of rows minus one that is the last element if it is not the first or last element then what we need to do we need to get character in between and for character in between i told you we do character in section minus two into current row at what which row it is we will get the row accordingly after that we will get the second index how do we get the second index we add index plus character in between as i told you in the this example when we were adding 4 to this a we were getting to l that is why you are adding index plus character in between and then we will check if this second index is exceeding the range then we cannot do it so this check is very much important if it is not exceeding the range we will add it to our answer answer plus is equal to s second index second index is added and when you are done with this to move our while loop we will update our index to character in section what this means is when we are done with this l element we will simply update our index to the total number of elements in the section so we can reach to the second element which of which is of this row one yes or no so this is what you have to do so let's see and finally you have to return the answer string so i think this should work i hope you understood it let's just run and check whether it is working or not uh, int second index plus 
there should not be because it is updated now we have not initialized the second index to anything right now we are just adding it we are updating it so it should work so yeah it is working for all the test cases let's just submit it so yeah it is accepted so the time complexity for this approach will be o of n because we are only running one loop of n and the space complexity will be constant because we are not creating any extra space so i hope you like the video please like share and subscribe thank you so much for watching bye bye